inmates hope for better year. Pasim na rin tuktukin sa laos ngalang mong sorry. Pumigaw ang tuklak ko. NCD Police gear up for New Year Ops. And couple welcomes 2019 with marriage. This is National MTV News with Meriba Tulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is Sunday's News. As the clock counts down to a new year, people all around Papua New Guinea are gearing up to welcome 2019. And for those behind the bars, it could mean the day they will be returning home is also getting closer. Some inmates at the Bomana prison outside Port Mosby spoke openly of the things they plan in doing in the new year. With the new year just two days away, inmates at Bomana Jail are also gearing up to welcome 2019. And just like those outside of the prison fence, these inmates also have New Year's resolutions. This is what some of them plan to do in 2019. My resolutions for next year, but yeah, maybe if I uh, get out of this place, I think I try to do something much better for the community and my village back home in uh, Gulf Province. Uh, next year, lo, near resolution blow me, Muslim. By me, Adam Tutok blow, Bosman blow me. Now maintain him this la. Pass him, Adam Tutok in Selaus Kalabu, sorry. Bomiga, good blow, man lo. Behind time, time me lose him slap na, me go outside. Plan you play, yeah, me like making me resolution blow me. That uh, by next year, me must. Uh, Stop good na, me must be in him. One is something good, he make himself alive, lomi, lo banis. You follow boy, me go long to 2019. So you me must look somewhere, lo, right now, wrong, you me. You me need to change. While most of these inmates we spoke to said they regretted their actions that brought them here in the first place, they are encouraging young men and women outside the prison not to engage in criminal activities. John Paul, an inmate, has spent 16 years behind bars. Paul says one of the things that changed him completely was the religious activities that took place in the prison. People like Boon Lolotu, where it's like something that comes up and says, bring me people or families outside, come Lolotu inside now, making people feel the same. People got him, family blue people stop. The inmates also sent out their belated Christmas and New Year's greetings to their friends and families. Me like selling my New Year greetings from me, all family, all the Karara, and the Assembly of the Ula Island. Me like encourage him all the Barata from the Banis, all family outside, that um, without Christ, life will be by staff, useless. We may need him, uh, accepting Christ to life will be, so good luck sit down and Mr. Christ alone. One time this land, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, like I just want to wish uh, the people of Papua New Guinea and who are watching a uh, uh, belated Merry Christmas and a uh, prosperous uh, 2019, all the way from uh, Bumana prison camp. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, like I Michelle Stephen, National MTV News. Today signified a new chapter for a special couple as they finally walked down the aisle and said, I do. Over 50 friends, relatives and families of Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Paki joined to witness and celebrate their holy matrimony. A beautiful love story opening a new chapter into 2019 was written today at the Pacific Adventist University Church. After a surprising proposal at the launch of the One Talk SME earlier this year in March, Captain Bruce Pucky and Bianca Tombi tied the knot today. Family and friends joined in this beautiful ceremony not only to celebrate, but also witness the couple's vows and life commitment to each other. Pastor Thomas Dabai Sr. said this chapter will have challenges of its own, but everyone must remember that marriage was ordained and blessed by God. He alluded to marriage as like a university that one enters and never graduates. And marriage is holy because God has blessed it. And that is why something that God has blessed, we cannot play around with it. 
And that is where it comes family life. A future to love and to hold, Mr. and Mrs. Paki now have a new story to write together. As the Apostle Paul best said many, many years ago, these words are still alive today and ring true. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Lillian Soperakinea, National MTV News. Over 300 police officers will be involved in the New Year security operation in Port Mosby, launched last week. This year's operation will include road checks, random searches on suspicious individuals, and inspections at areas where liquor is sold. This will be a 12-hour operation set to begin at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. Every year, the New Year operation is considered the biggest police operation that is carried out in all 22 provinces. In Port Mosby, the aim is to minimize road accidents, ensure liquor is sold at licensed areas only, and make sure city residents welcome the New Year peacefully. While in other provinces, the New Year operation tactics may be different. The New Year security operation for 2018 will be bigger than previous years. It will involve members of the Traffic and Dog Unit Directorates, specializing in vehicle inspections and drug searches. Members of the Special Services Division or Mobile Squad will be providing additional manpower support in the operation, which will be coordinated by the NCD Metropolitan Commander. Apart from police officers, medical workers and security guards are also expected to be on duty while welcoming the new year. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. The Christmas police operations in Manus province have recorded two separate arrests. The first, an outstanding murder case from 2011, while the other, an arrest on sexual penetration. Manus police, police commander, Chief Inspector David Yapu, said police were sent out in teams to patrol both outer islands and on the Manus highway. Apart from these arrests, Manus police attended to break enter and stealing and traffic related offences. A new year operation is being planned and police in Manos will be on patrol while welcoming year 2019. Here with the news this Sunday, we'll have more stories after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Port Mosby police are treating what has been reported as a suicide as a homicide case. This comes after the family of the late Solange Iva Aitsi from Central Province believes she was killed following an argument with her husband on Christmas Day. Aitsi's family released a statement saying they found bruises on her head, knees and legs when they arrived to identify her body at the morgue. The husband, who is being treated as the prime suspect, has turned himself in to police for questioning. The couple just got married last month and were living at Hohola. The United Nations Population Fund will be rolling out a program aimed at resolving conflicts in the Highlands region. Though it is a new program that will be trialled in Southern Highlands Province, UNFPA is confident its existing partnership with the Mendy Catholic Diocese and the national government will prove successful. UNFPA will be rolling out the Conflict Resolution Program in 2019 in partnership with two other United Nations organizations. This program looks at ways to maintain peace in the community and resolving conflicts without the use of violence. Uh, next year, we are tackling uh, the issue of uh, um, uh, conflict 
the issue of conflict resolution, where the whole UN came up with a, a proposal which has been approved, and uh, we are going to roll out that proposal with uh, two other agencies, including, I mean, three agencies, including UNFPA. So we have UNFPA, UN Women, and, and IOM together uh, to roll out that program. The Highlands region has been targeted to trial this program because of continuous reports of tribal fights in the seven provinces as part of UNFPA's humanitarian assistance to communities this program will be carried out with the support from the Catholic Diocese in Mendy and other government bodies. That program is, uh, is, is very critical for Highland because we believe that there's no need for communities you know, to, to have some differences in fighting and while communities are supposed to be together, have peaceful coexistence. UNFPA is a United Nations organization body that focuses on improving sexual reproductive health, conducts awareness on maternal health, and provides counseling to a certain level on family planning. Following the February earthquake, UNFPA teamed up with authorities in Southern Highlands and Hela in providing humanitarian assistance to those affected. To ensure that the people, especially the pregnant women, uh, get access. But at the same time, we also know that when we have emergencies and people start uh, running away, fleeing, um, most of the women do not I mean, get away with uh, any, uh, anything. So to help them restore the dignity, the NFPA also provided uh, 6,000 uh, dignity kits. That includes some sanitary pads, you know, some cloth. Uh, to help the woman, you know, uh, based on her own uh, woman condition, female condition, uh, restore her dignity. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. Nursing officers at the Laluki Public Psychiatric Hospital are looking forward to year 2019. The staff said all the patients are healthy and slowly starting to regain conscience. Michelle Stephen with this report. As one of Papua New Guinea's only mental hospital, the Laloki Psychiatric Hospital has faced a lot of challenges but still stands firm to serve its patients who are in need of mental care and help. Clinical nursing supervisor Jeffrey Alphonse says patients are referred from Port Moresby General Hospital, the court and privately. Patients across the, the nation and of all walks of life um, we don't, there's no uh, distinction, distinction within the, the clients that we care for. Despite the year being challenging, Alphonse says they have done their best. For this year, it's like we've done what we, have, we can do at our capacity from the uh, management as well as from the hospital point of view. Uh, we've, cared, we've done that for the last 20 years, uh, even before that, and the hospital is still here. Uh, we're still caring for those that we care for, especially the mentally ill, female patients, uh, male patients, uh, the young ones that uh, are mentally uh, affected, uh, mentally breakdown. We uh, get, get them here. General Community Nurse Sister Bassas John says the nurses and health workers work on shifts to make sure that patients are not left alone. The very important task, major task that we do here is like we do hourly roll calls to make sure that uh, we observe our patients on the hourly basis. Uh, uh, every 30 minutes we observe them. You know, they are mentally healed, they, they do anything. Anything happens anytime with, the, with our patients. So most of the time we do our roll calls. Uh, uh, we make sure we give their treatments. We make sure they are safe in their rooms outside while they are walking around. Uh, their safety and most of the time it's just observations we do. Hello, on behalf of the patients and the staff and the management of Laloki Psychiatric Hospital, we would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2019. Michelle Steven, National and TV News. 
A 22-year-old man from Manus is facing a damage to public property charge and has appeared for mention at the Lorangau District Court. Shelby Pilmet from Tingo Village in Tetidu LLG is accused of damaging sections of the Tingo Health Center earlier this month. Manus Police Commander Chief Inspector David Yapu said Pilmet was reported drunk on the night of the incident. Yapu said Pilmet went to the health center and argued with nursing staff over royalty payments for the piece of land that the health center is built on. Damages to the buildings are estimated to be worth over 70,000 kina. Here with Sunday's news. When we come back, we take a look at stories making headlines overseas. Welcome back to the news. The New York City skyline lit up a bright blue light overnight, causing panic on social media. Some thought the cause was aliens. Overnight, the pitch black sky in New York City lighting up a supernatural bright blue. It was spectacular. You could see it from the precinct, and the precinct's probably about a half mile away. Uh, you felt it in your chest. Residents of the borough of Queens in New York City saying it looked like an alien invasion from a movie. It's like blue. Countless videos like these posted on social media. But the cause? Actually a transformer explosion at a Con Edison power plant, causing what Con Ed called an electrical arc flash, visible across a wide part of the area. It did start with a fire. And the fire affected some transformers, and that caused a dip in power for this surrounding area. At LaGuardia Airport, flights were grounded and power went out briefly. We advise the approach lights are out of service at this time. You could see just like this electrical explosion going on over there and then people started pulling out their phones and then the workers started saying that everybody needed to evacuate and exit and clear the area. Lights flickered across the city. About 80 customers lost power. Is that an explosion? But fortunately, no injuries were reported. Thousands of music fans are settling in for a three-day party at the Pyramid and Alps Festival in New Zealand. While most are setting up tents, some are taking an eco-friendly approach to camping. Lining up for one of the biggest gigs of the summer, budget tents in hand. Right. Yes. Enjoy the festival. But the short-term accommodation solution brings its own problems. They'll go into the warehouse or Bunnings, they'll buy a cheap tent for $15-$20. After three days, it's stuffed and they leave it behind. Now festival organisers are offering a more sustainable option, tents made out of cardboard. The car tents uh, arrive flat packed and they're really quick to build. The tents are popular in Europe, but it's the first time they've featured at a Kiwi festival. They're set up in advance for campers and while the cardboard's got a waterproof coating, it is recyclable. Festivals indeed do produce a lot of waste, um, huge amounts, uh, so any step you can take to um, divert or educate or have a better impact is really, really uh, crucial and important. Each tent adds $70 to the ticket cost, with airbeds and sleeping bags extra, a price these campers were happy to pay. Less rubbish, less clean up, just makes the vibe a whole lot better. Yeah, it's very dark, yeah, and definitely protects from the wind as well. This year, Rhythm and Alps is also getting rid of single-use cups. Instead, festival goers will use these. They'll pay a one-off $3 fee, and when they bring it back, they'll get a new one. Really lessening that impact and making sure that people are responsible for what's what's in their hand and what's not going on the ground as well. The festival is cleaner but also you get this you get this attitudinal change in people. Taking the green approach so festival goers can party with a conscience. Mountains of electronic waste, old TVs, computers and household appliances are ending up in Togo, Africa. While there are many who are happy to find a use for it, it's also taking a toll on the environment. A child's toy from an unlikely source, made from other people's unwanted waste. This is plastic, so we print it with the 3D printer. Okay, and, and you made this 3D printer? Yeah, yeah, we made a 3D printer. 
okay from from a e-waste material so we recycle uh, old uh, printers conventional printers uzia is one of a growing number of young entrepreneurs who sees the potential of e-waste uh, as an emerging business in togo it's estimated nearly half a million tons of used electrical goods arrive here through the port of lome every year from old mobile phones and laptops through to tvs and generators there's a rising demand for the latest second-hand electronics at bargain prices. But we've been told that 80% of imports that are sold at markets like these no longer work. Despite international conventions that ban the movement of non-working electronics, they find their way to these shores, hidden inside vehicles that have been shipped from the West. For those dismantling discarded electronics come serious risks. Toxic materials like mercury and lead can be contained within them. There are people here who are trying to reprocess this material safely in recycling centers. But even Hervé Chamsi, whose business depends on discarded technology, is concerned about the long-term environmental cost. There are lots of people who make a living from the fact that e-waste is coming into the country and regulating it would reduce the amount of money that can be made. But a lot of the waste which arrives here is dangerous, so we should really think about the impact it could have on our environment. Despite these challenges, initiatives are cropping up across the capital, including here, where children as young as 10 are learning ways to recycle electronics safely. In a country with limited job opportunities, startups like these could provide Togo with some of the answers to a sustainable technological future. The police negotiation team is often deployed to the most volatile police callouts, from suicides to bank robberies. There are teams in New Zealand, but only a few are selected each year for training. Police negotiators work in some of the most complex and emotional situations. Armed offender call-outs, hostage dramas, suicides. They're volatile circumstances requiring the right type of person. The best negotiators are the best listeners. There's also a team of six advanced police negotiators hand-picked to deal with terrorism or prolonged incidents. So we do train for that, or we haven't had to be deployed yet, luckily. <laughs> Not anyone can be a police negotiator. Only 16 are selected every six months for the intense two-week training. And not everyone graduates. Hey look, my name's Dylan. What's yours? Dylan Robinson's one of the latest recruits who has just finished training. To be part of the police negotiation team just allows you to have um, that interaction with people where they're really struggling. Some of the training involves theory, but the majority is practical, sometimes bringing in actors to reenact situations. It's very much humanising what we do. It's um, taking the police out of it, so to speak, um, and just becoming that person who can listen and, and try and make a difference. Lisa Norton has been on the team and an instructor for 11 years. Her first incident saw her talking to a suicidal woman. We're really um, fortunate to be able to get into someone's um, someone's space when they're in a moment of crisis and any time we have the opportunity to be able to talk to them it's, it's a benefit for, for them and for us. That outcome was positive. Those moments of crisis a constant challenge for the team with over 1,000 call outs on average a year. You're with Sunday's News. We go for a break. When we come back some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Stay tuned. Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. A sporting competition is on the path to deterring youth from unlawful behaviour during this festive season. Many youth of the Saiwara Valley in Port Mosby's eight-year settlement have resorted to playing football and volleyball, but more importantly, keeping out of trouble. An official from the Saiwara Sports Association says the association aims to combat unlawful behaviour through sport. Rosemary Ambune reports. 
The Saiwara Valley field was packed with youths from different ethnic groups who formed teams to compete with each other. While some may see it as a normal sports competition, the settlers in Saiwara Valley see this as an avenue to combat drug and alcohol abuse within their neighborhood. The sports competition started as a suggestion from the members of the community to fight social issues in the community. The initiative was inspired by the death of two men in the area, both that are related to alcohol and drug abuse. As a mother, I'm concerned. Why? Because um, we let our youths all over the place, they get into doing all kinds of things and then they give us too much problems. So how do we rectify this? There are no criteria and categories for teams and players. Even though the competition has not been formally registered, it has helped the youths to stay out of trouble, especially during this festive season. It was first funded by Oro Community Development Association with 2,000 kina. The money was used to purchase the equipment and other needs to facilitate the competition in the beginning. We, we did not uh, get any fi financial backings. We started throwing the ball onto the field and, and the boys took it from there and they started playing. Rosemary Yambune, National MTV Sports. We go for a quick break and be back with more of Trukai Sports after these messages. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. To cricket overseas and the New Zealand Black Caps needed four wickets to win the Boxing Day Test and secure a series victory over Sri Lanka. There was plenty of frustration for New Zealand's bowlers as they endured a long day in the fields. The day started so promisingly for New Zealand with Trent Bolt and Tim Southey finding early swing and causing problems. The Sri Lankan pair Kasal Mendes and Dinesh Chandimal riding their luck as a frustrated Bolt resorted to a verbal attack. But nothing would unsettle Mendes, who dispatched Bolt before becoming the second player after India's Virat Kohli to score a thousand runs in 2018. With the pitch looking flat, the Black Caps were in desperate need of inspiration, and it came from an unlikely source, the 12th man. In the air. That brilliant grab proved to be false hope, with Wellington hero Angelo Matthews joining Chandimal and continuing to blunt the Black Caps, no doubt causing more than the snap at Hagley Oval. An injury to Matthews only added to New Zealand's frustrations, Wagner telling him where to go. Matthews would retire hurt at tea before Wagner made the breakthrough. The quick celebrating with a pointed message for someone in the crowd that brought in Nirishan Dikwala, who gifted Tim Southey his wicket. Oh, it's out of the stuff. Oh, dear. The typically lion-hearted Wagner would have the last say with his third wicket, nicking off Rasheen Silva to leave the Black Caps four wickets away from a hard-fought series win. To football and in the A-League, the Wellington Phoenix have been denied a precious away win against the table-topping Melbourne victory, but have extended the unbeaten record to five games through a hard-fought draw. Mark Rudan's Phoenix have been running hot, arriving in Melbourne on the back of three big wins, and the coach's decision to pick David Williams ahead of Nathan Burns, who hasn't scored since 2016, looked inspired. Williams back onto the right foot. A victory side without superstar Keisuke Honda, but former Phoenix man Costa Barbarousas almost hit back immediately. The visitors holding firm until Andrew Durante failed to deal with another Barbarousas cross. The all-white striker coming close to finding a winner late on. 
then denied by Kurter. Some last ditch defending, securing a one all draw. The result at the home of the reigning champions showing just how far the Phoenix have come under the new coach. But as a spectacle, it was sensational. I think the people in the stadium and certainly people watching at home would have thoroughly enjoyed themselves watching that game of cracking football. We're showing some good signs now and we're playing some good football as well, creating chances and I thought in the first half in particular we yeah, we were the better side. Finishing 2018 five points off the top, the Rudan revolution continues. A French pensioner is sailing across the Atlantic in a barrel hoping to reach the Caribbean using just currents to propel him start of a very long journey by a man who by all measures is a pretty adventurous pensioner. Jean-Jacques Savin is a retired military parachutist who built a three metre barrel out of wood, covered it with resin and stocked it with apparently everything the 71 year old needs. Here is my bed, my bed with straps which will allow me to tie myself down, he says, and the fish will be my television. There's a tablet and satellite phone too that he's already using to post location updates on Facebook. Savin's plan is to ride the ocean currents from the Canary Islands to the Caribbean, travelling about two to three kilometres an hour for four and a half thousand kilometres. It's expected to take three months. Savin will drop markers along the way to help oceanographers studying Atlantic Ocean currents. And he's a sophisticated adventurer. En particulier iridium. The barrel is stocked with a bottle of Sauterne and some foie gras for New Year's Eve and some red from Saint-Emilion for his birthday in January. Hopefully Jean-Jacques has something even bigger to toast in a few months' time. To tennis, it's a nightmare for organisers, but great news for tennis fans. A first-time clash for two former world number ones, Venus Williams and Victoria Azarenka, at the upcoming ASB Classic. As Arenka was last in Auckland, she's won two Grand Slams and been world number one. But her second visit to the ASB Classic just became a little tougher. To play against <laughs> Venus Williams, Victoria Azarenka from Belarus. Wow. Of the 31 players the world number 51 could have been drawn to play, she's been lined up against Venus Williams. Obviously great for the fans that we're going to get a, a Grand Slam final quality match as a first round at the ASB Classic. For tournament director Carl Budge, today's draw couldn't have been crueler. Despite having three former world number ones in the field, they're all in the same quarter of the draw, and two will face off on Tuesday. On a positive, there'll be one of them uh, no matter what in the second round. He wasn't the only one focusing on the positive. You know, she's been playing for a long time and still looks like she enjoys um, playing tennis and uh, competition and everything, so... It'll just be another battle. Azarenka is currently celebrating winning another battle. The mother of one has helped lead a charge with Serena Williams to make things easier for women returning after having kids. The WTA has just approved a rule that will protect a new mum's ranking for three years. I'm very proud of the, uh, that we are being the pioneer in sports, you know, especially in women's sport, um, that are taking the stance and taking those rules and making those big progress in that area. Progress for women in sport, but to make progress on the court in Auckland, Azarenka will have to overcome one of the tournament's favourite champions. And that ends Trukai Sports. We go for a break. When we come back, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby and Daru, cloudy periods and windy conditions. Cloudy periods expected in Kerma, cloudy weather with possible showers and thunderstorms for Alotau. Rain, showers and thunderstorms tonight for Popandeta. To the Momasi region, Lake can expect some cloudy periods with a shower or two over the next 24 hours. The same as well for Wau. Cloudy periods with some showers expected later tonight for Madang, Wewak and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorangau can expect some cloudy weather with possible showers this evening. 
rain and showers and possible thunderstorms tonight for Kavian. Cloudy weather with a possible thunderstorm for Kokopo and Rabaul. Showers and thunderstorms expected in Kimbe. And cloudy periods with late night showers and a possible thunderstorm for Buka. And to the Highlands region, rain and showers with possible thunderstorms with areas of morning fog expected for Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundiawa. In Mendi and Wabeg, cloudy periods with evening showers and early morning fog developing. To so look at the forecast for small ships, there is a renewal of a strong wind warning current for all coastal waters. Strong northwest wind surges of 25 to 34 knots tending clockwise in the southern region with gale force winds are expected to continue for the next 24 hours causing very rough winds and high wind waves. To the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Island, Kerma to Yule Island, Hood Point to Samurai, Eastern and Western Milne Bay Islands, New Island, East New Britain and Bougainville seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Samurai to Kibogul to Fenchafen, Manus and its group of islands seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Fenchafen through Vitias and Dampier Straits to Siasi, Medang and Bogia seas 1 to 2.5 meters. And waters of Bogia, Wiwak to Aitape, Vanimo and the northern PNG Indonesian border seas 1 to 2 meters. And a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. Coral Sea sees very rough with clockwise winds at 25 to 34 knots. Solomon Sea sees rough to very rough with northwesterly winds at 25 to 34 knots. Bismarck Sea sees rough with northwesterly winds at 25 to 34 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees moderate to rough with northwesterly winds at 15 to 30 knots. Weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And that has been the news sport and weather for today, Sunday the 30th of December 2018. On behalf of the MTV News team, have a safe working week. Good night.